Today we're going to be looking at exploit kits. Um, some of you may know what they are, some of you may not, so I've decided, I've decided to um, have a look at them because it's quite an important area. So I'm going to give the lowdown. Um, it's used to execute malicious code onto your machine. That's the sort of simple sort of definition that I have for this. It uses exploits to achieve execution. Um, if you're not too sure about these terms, then you know you can search them up, have a little go at that. Um, common software targeted because um, you know you could have an exploit that is used by one person in the world, but if you're going to be releasing this onto the internet to uh, execute malicious code you want as much coverage as possible so common software is targeted so Adobe Flash Player, Java, Silverlight these sort of plugins that are used in browsers um, are commonly targeted um, I do believe if anyone has heard of the plugin Holler um, the Netflix before we go on I've got a new I know right it's because you know so, certain people deserve some privacy in this house um, because I obviously record very often. It isn't just YouTube I do. And so I've decided to give them a little bit of privacy. And so you guys don't get distracted basically from all the elements in my room. If you like it, give me a like. Because anyway. Um, so yeah, Holla was basically a Netflix favourite for people. Um, lots of people use it. Um, to access Netflix from America or whatever country they wish and so someone looked at this they had a little research and you can without looking at the privacy issues of it being used as a sort of botnet will you know search that up it, it can also be executed some, some uh, the VLC plugin that Holla has um, you can remotely execute some code so you know this sort of example you could have it anywhere on the internet any any website this is you could have an exploit and because the plugin is installed, it can be activated and um, remote code can be executed. So that's a sort of explanation of why um, common software is targeted and an example, Ola. So am I saying that right? Anyway, um, Sweet Orange Exploit Kit, Rig Exploit Kit, Nuclear Exploit Kit, Anglo Exploit Kit. There's so many exploit kits in the world. Um, some of you may know some of these, some of you might, might not. For a lowdown, I have a lot of experience, a lot of other people have a lot of experience with rig. Quite easy to find, um, quite well known, cheap price, the cheapest, easy to use, a lot of people use it. A lot of different ideas of dodgy sort of, are they executing every time? Um, I'll get onto that maybe on another video. Sweet Orange is more professional, it's in the... Um, uh, Price-wise, it's around in you know the thousands rather than rig in the hundreds, um, and so and is let much harder to find obviously because they don't wish to have researchers and um, other people infiltrating their customer base. And also, I put a question mark there because there's new ones coming out and there's old ones dying all the time. Um, there was sticks, if anyone knows that. I looked at that quite often. S T Y X. Quite good, um, quite professional. Um, unsure if it's still running right now. Um, I'm not a big um, watcher of exploit kits. Caffeine is, if you know who he is, great blog. Go check him out if you haven't. Great on the security of exploit kits. Go check that out. Also, there's various other people on Twitter that also watch it. Uh, great people. But he's the main, or she, I'm not fully sure. He or she is the main person on blogs uh, for exploit kits and Kahoo security as well very good um, check him out if you're interested in this subject um, so there's a sn scenario here that I've already talked about you have you view you view a website first of all any website that you wish um, and it just so happens they could be hacked or there is a malicious intent for this website and um, you have flash player installed a fairly common plugin everyone has it they watch YouTube even though there's HTML5 support I mean still everyone has flash player it's just a wildly widely um, used plugin an exploit author pays or develops to get an exploit for flash player um, it's kind of you know they get it somehow. I, I didn't want to put, you know, they, they pay or they research specifically. They can acquire it in different ways. Um, when visiting the page, dependent on your version, because sometimes it can be patched already and sometimes um, it won't work. Also, there's antiviruses that could potentially help you out as well. But in simple terms, dependent on your version and Flash Player's patch status, you could have malicious codes executed and successfully got onto your system without any sort of problem. Sometimes you're okay, as I say, antiviruses help out, you know, not all the time. Um, but, you know, they try their hardest. It's usually down to URL patterns a lot of the time to 
catch these um, and that's why they try to be as generic as possible um, as you can see q.php and a hash trying to change it but you know url patterns are quite often the way exploit kits are detected in my opinion i mean maybe you have a different one um, and pa they, their panels are much like botnet panels um, if none of you have seen an exploit kit panel it looks much like this this is sweet orange if no one's seen it before and basically what we have here is um, all traffic so this is the amount of people that have viewed the page and it's successfully counted them and filtered by tds is basically um people that aren't supposed to be exploited um, loaded is basically the the executable or the malicious code has been loaded onto the machine it's been executed correctly um, and it's been verified um, and then we can go down with um, and it filters it down to operating system as well and the percentage that it's been loaded um, that's actually a fairly poor 30 th well actually that's not too bad um, around see we've got here it's the the yeah so um yeah there's uh you're not gonna obviously get over ten percent if you get over ten percent it's a little bit worrying to why you may have over ten percent you may want to look at some traffic um dealers while they're doing that but yeah that's not that's not the thing today we're gonna have a little look as I've done the presentation we're going to have a little look at the sort of user client side of such uh, samples. This was taken from Caffeine's paste bin. If you don't follow him, then you probably don't look at his paste bin. But so this is an Angular exploit kit um, sort of sample. It's when the user has visited the page. This is the page that basically gets the exploit and grabs it. It's usually obvious. Well, it if it isn't obfuscated, it you should be worried that you're looking at a really shocking exploit kit. Um, it will always be. A, obfuscated um, for detection from antiviruses it tries to uh, sort of randomize and make sure that it's not always the same sort of like polymorphism that's what the word I was looking for there um, but basically what we've got here is function D first of all sort of sets up a script and then we see here if I just yeah I highlight this we can see E function E is becoming variable A B here is document create element script and then in B text is A um, so basically it's creating a script tag and this is quite common that they use this sort of um, strange sort of jagged way of creating elements um, it's so that as I say detection isn't always the same um, so first of all what I'm going to do is I always just put this in a different area um, so if we just HTML, but basically it's always going to be different. There's usually evals or um, some form of unescape. Um, and what you want to do is you really want to look for, if there's an eval, try and alert first. I, in a previous video that is not available anymore, I showed that. But this is quite common that we've got so much of this. Um, and we're only going to go to the first level because there's always going to be um, a certain level of stuff and I'm just going to go through this quickly um, but the next video we're going to be looking at this again I've already decided that we're going to be looking at exploit kits in the very next video that I make on this channel um, so if you're interested in this you're in luck um, and what we're going to be doing is basically if we just leave that as it is nothing's going to happen and we've extracted it and we've created some script tags but we haven't called it and we don't want to simply call um, function e such as this because that will simply um, call the code that could put some I mean we're in a virtual machine if you don't know um, but it's it's not it's not amazing to do that um, one way to go around this and see the code is put it in a text area um, that's quite common I use that a lot um, I'm gonna put these in brackets um, so a text area alerting is great actually let's do a lurk first but I think the thing with alerting is if there's a lot um that it may not show at all so step one it may not show all of the code so if i just execute this to make this a little bit clearer for you guys because i'm obviously not making this clearer because i'm a little bit confused so let's just let this run and as you can see here we've got this it's pretty hard to really know what's going on and it's it hasn't I don't believe it's captured everything now as we can see there's no ending quotation mark here it's just simply um, put a bit we don't want that we want the whole thing so a good way if that is too long um, is to document write it into a text field now there are 
Kahoo Security, as I've said before, has provided some great tools um, to sort of automate decrypting a, a exploit kit's um, code. But I always think that, and I, I say this to you know SQL injection and everything else, is that you should always try and do it yourself the hard way first because there's always going to be instances where a tool can't do something and so it's better to just learn to do it your way and learn from experience so if we just open this up we can see that there is actually a whole lot more there's actually a decryption um, again so what I would do then because usually if we just put this in another file now we can see it's quite blocky and it's hard to read um, a lot of you have probably heard of it. It's called JS Beautifier, and it's great for just sort of making it humanly readable because you won't be able to read it such as that. And if we just open it up and copy and paste that now and turn JavaScript on, we can see here we've got some more, which is uh, a little bit more involved. If we just go up, we'll see that there are specific user agents used. Um, to decide whether um, they should execute or not. We've got 6.2 and 6.3. I'm actually not sure what they are, but we've also got this main part here, which I assume, and I hope you guys assume as well, that that is the part that we should decrypt, and this is the um, different functions to be used to get that. Um, but that is the first level. Um, there's various other ways as well. I wonder if Ival is involved in any way here. Nope, Ival isn't. Um, but many exploit kits do use eval um, and you should alert to see because eval is a great sort of um, seeing a big point of an exploit kit. They usually use that quite well. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I've talked enough. That's the video for today. I hope you like that. I know I, it took me some time to sort of get everything. I was, I'm was i collecting resources for various projects for this channel. I'm really in, interested to see what comes out with it. Um, I was also setting things up and making sure that it looked as cool as possible. If you liked it, give me a like, comment, subscribe, because subscribing gives me some great feedback, basically. It tells me that I'm doing a good job. Um, if I didn't do good, just tell me. Say, Jack, I'm not interested in exploit kits, like I say in every video. Anyway, um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for looking, and yeah, see you in the next video about exploit kits. Confirmed. Why to fight? Why to fight?